In chess, there is actually something more important than learning openings, learning tactics, learning end game, middle game. The most important thing to know is basic checkmates. In today's no nonsense guide, I'm going to show you how to checkmate with queen and king, as well as king and two rooks, as well as king and one rook. I have timestamps for each of these, and I'll start off with the queen and king checkmates. So the first step to doing this is actually leave your king where it is. You don't need to move your king. Instead, move your queen into a knight's opposition to the king so what that means is you would play queen to c3 here that way your queen is one knight hop away from the enemy king and here you simply copy their movement so king moves here queen moves here if king moves you simply copy their movement and you keep going and going and you keep slowly limiting their squares all the way until you get this position right here. Now, when they go into the very corner, if they're on any of the four corners, that is your cue to not copy them. Because if you do copy them one more time, this would be a stalemate because black simply has no legal moves here, but they are not in check. And that would unfortunately be a draw. So instead, now that the king can only go to these two squares, you simply start running your king. So king moves. You simply start running your king all the way to theirs, and once you have it right next to theirs, your queen and your king both cover this square right here, and simply queen here would be a checkmate. So that is the queen and king checkmate, pretty simple. Now let's move on to the king and two rooks checkmate, and usually this is two rooks, however it can also be rook and queen, or queen and queen if you promote one of your pawns, and the key to this one is to first play rook to h2 or whatever the equivalent would be in your games. And what you're going to do here is move each of your rooks in tandem and cut off all the squares from the enemy king until the eventual checkmate. So here that will look like king to c4 and now rook to h4 check. This rook covers all these squares. This rook covers all these squares, meaning the king must go up and you continue with the pattern. Rook to g5 check, king moves rook to h6 check king moves and eventually you will get this position where you cannot play the check because the king would simply capture and when you get this position you slide your rook over to the other side of the board and then you would deliver the check from this side i mean king moves you simply move the other rook as well and now this and this cannot be stopped in any way king moves rook check king moves rook check mate so that is the two rooks checkmate. And now let's move on to the most complicated of them, this being the king and rook checkmate. All right, so the first step to doing this one is you want to cut off the enemy king by playing rook up to h4, or once again, whatever the equivalent would be in your game. And you're cutting off all of these squares. And after the king moves, let's say king to d5 in this case, you want to get a position where your king is one square away from the enemy king. And when we get that position, I'll show you what we can do. So what you want to play here is not king to d3, because even though you do get this, it doesn't really work because it's black's turn to move and they can simply move out of the way. So instead, what you would want to play here is king up to e3. That way you get this little pattern here, and if the king moves, then now you have the same position, however it is your turn to move. And the reason that that is so important is that when you have this, your king is controlling all three squares that the enemy king could have to run away, so that is your cue to play the check with your rook. And all the squares from the king are actually covered, meaning it is forced to go back and you simply keep doing this pattern here so king drops back and here is a nice little detail if you want to go for the fastest checkmate you actually don't want to play this because once again they would move out of the way instead you play a move like king to f4 here once again if king here then you would have another check but if king runs the other way then you simply follow them king to e4 once again if they move here you would have the same check so king keeps running 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 keeps on going until you get this position where the king is forced to move back and now you can successfully play the check right here king will move and now you once again copy the pattern not king here instead of king here 
and you keep running very simple pattern lots of king moves and if the enemy king ever ends up attacking your rook you simply want to slide it to the other side of the board very similar to the uh, two rooks checkmate the very same idea here and after something like king to f7 when you get a position like this you don't want to move your king because then they can simply move out of the way so instead you play a waiting move with your rook like rook to b6 here king will move and they can continue following them king moves the king is now forced to go back and once again we play the same check it's basically the exact same pattern king to f8 and once you've done so many times you can basically do it on autopilot kings are running king attacks the rook so rook moves to the other side of the board and now here, once again, you don't want to move your king. Instead, play a waiting move. King keeps running. You keep following. They have to move here. And now you play the check. There is no more foul for them to run back to. And because of that, this is a very nice checkmate. All right, so that is your no-nonsense guide on three of the most basic checkmates. Have a great day. Like and subscribe. And I will see you next time.